In the segment on the Dirac notation, I mentioned that there are very general uncertainty principles, but they all are a bit tricky to derive. This is really because in such general settings, quantum observables can have some intriguing features, as I will illustrate here by a physical example that also shows what interesting consequences this can have in practice. For this, recall how we emphasized for the particle in the box that the boundary conditions there reflect a very particular situation, namely that the system is terminated by hard walls stretching to infinity. For instance, you could also consider a system where the line segment actually represents a ring, where you would apply so-called periodic boundary conditions. And if you solve this problem, you find that the lowest energy state has a vanishing energy, just as in the classical problem. And furthermore, momentum becomes precisely quantized and hence seems to be well defined. Now you can build such rings in a semiconductor heterostructure. And when you look at this, the electrons in there are now confined to a finite region in space. So it is certainly worthwhile to think about this a bit more in detail. And then we can make two interesting observations, first a physical one and then a mathematical one. Physically, we should recognize that the structure that we build is really in three dimensions. At best, it is periodic into two directions because the ring fills out a torus, but this torus has a finite diameter. And so the electrons are confined into this direction. And this gives them a finite energy above the classical minimum and furthermore, if you translate this into the momentum in Cartesian coordinates, then you find that all the three components have a corresponding uncertainty. Secondly, you can solve, of course, still this problem in the original one-dimensional setting, mathematically, but then we need to take into account that the position translates really into an angle, which is only defined up to multiples of 2 pi. And as it turns out, this makes it impossible to define a consistent corresponding operator. What you can define is a derivative with respect to this angle, as any constant then drops out. And we will meet this operator very soon, because it will turn out to be a component of angular momentum. Now, such angles appear also in other settings, with an important example being a superconductor. These can be described by a complex parameter delta, which is an energy scale, but also carries a complex phase. And when you couple two superconductors with different phase together, you find that a dissipationless current flows between them. This is known as the Josephson effect. And something similar can even happen in the rings mentioned above, when you expose them to a magnetic field. This changes the boundary conditions in a very particular way, depending on the magnetic flux that passes through the interior of the ring. And now this gives the lowest energy state a finite momentum, so that a dissipationless current flows along the ring, which is known as the persistent current. So these examples illustrate how rigorous and consistent quantum mechanics really is. It emphasizes and amplifies conceptual details and equips systems with unique properties. And as I mentioned, we will also revisit this angular derivative here when we will discuss the role of angular momentum. Indeed, this discussion here already implies that this will reveal some very intriguing properties.